in the woodshed, I found my uncle's magazines. Snooping out of boredom, looking for a wrench to loosen a question in my body. I flipped along glossy women in kitchens without sinks and refrigerators without food. The bored housewives released frustrations by fucking the plumber. Her gardeners were pulled into pool houses by college freshmen, their pigtails doing most of the breaking. I saw women and horses, and women in circles of men, and women and women. There seemed to be no shortage of women. Being 11 with the drain pulled on my wondered lust, my eyes began to see sex everywhere. In the plunging of stopped toilets and gas tanks being filled, in the pool halls where my father circled his cue, how the world moaned and pumped and hope flashed fluorescently through the blinds. I lost my virginity three years later to a girl without a name, a neighbor in my curiosity about the body. Before we did it, she said, I don't make sounds during sex. And she didn't. Just waited blankly, waited to have emotions scribbled on her. Eventually, love marked me with a woman who walked with tumultuous hips. She made bathrooms and classrooms more exciting. Improved old Walt right. The body does electric when a kiss jumps the body. As love is the leap of moment suspended between jumping and landing, learning and knowing, quitting and starting again. And it hurts more than just in skin to walk because you're walked away from. And no sorrow dissipates or forgives. And no words can be, nothing can be easy. And her climbing up a balcony on the second floor to break in through the sliding glass door to leave on a puffed pillow. Music she made for you won't screw back together what was shed. No one wants to leave the comfort of wood or finally say goodnight. I wish the world had left me cuddled with boxes and magazines, with boxed wine and videos of Vegas. Can another cigarette break keep the shell of sleep from cracking? Stay the flashes of her vent under another man, wondering if she is across the country or the street. How can I stop her monuments and not hear her again? Not in the beginning, but near the end, it must have been a maniacally perfect God that made the heart, that would make men men and women women, with nothing in particular but spare parts, bits of tin and string, what yo-yos we are, lovers of intimate distance, swung together by twine and time, near the same flame eyes locked lonely on hearts made of toast and jelly, made of spoke and will, made of ant and aunts, made of mice, made of cans and whisper, of kites and keys, made of flags and caskets and fitted sheets, made of bust up, made of makeup and breakups, made of the door that opened Agathon next to Socrates, made Plato fondle his pen, 
to tell us that it was what God intended, independent of parts that we lay on each other.